Hey guys, welcome back to Election Predictions Official. We're about a year away from the kickoff of the home stretch of the 2024 presidential election, which traditionally starts on Labor Day of the election year. At this point, only one thing is already clear. The race will almost certainly be decided by a handful of voters in the very few states not entirely secure for either party. Before we really dive into this video's content though, make sure to check out my official forecast website at electionpredictionsofficial.com. It'll be the first link in the description and comment section down below, and updated weekly you will see how the 2024 presidential election is taking shape, based on polling data, voting history, shifts and trends, sociodemographic data, and prediction markets. I will be using this website in a lot of my videos going forward, so feel free to bookmark it, or whatever, so you can follow along. Now, looking ahead to the upcoming election year, the roster of swing states where both parties can realistically aim for victory is expected to shrink to historic lows, possibly as few as four, and almost certainly no more than seven or eight states. In this tightly contested arena, success or failure for both parties hinges on razor-thin margins. The most telling sign of this narrowing electoral college map phenomena is the increasing number of states where one party consistently holds an advantage in presidential elections. For example, over the past four presidential races, from Barack Obama's 2008 win to Joe Biden's triumph in 2020, 20 states consistently supported the Democratic nominee. Likewise, 20 states backed the GOP candidate in each of those contests. This means that 80% of states, or 40 out of 50, voted in the exact same direction across four consecutive presidential elections. This level of consistency has not been seen since the early 20th century. Yet, even during Franklin D. Roosevelt's four consecutive wins from 1932 to 1944, only about two-thirds of states voted the same way, either for or against Roosevelt in each election. From 1896 to 1908, during four consecutive Republican victories, just under three-fourths of states remained consistent. And lastly, from 1976 to 1988, only half of the states voted consistently. As previously mentioned, only 10 states have switched between parties since 2008, and some of these, such as Indiana, Iowa, Ohio, and Florida, are no longer considered true swing states due to their solid Republican support during the Trump era. North Carolina, another of the 10 switchers, has leaned consistently towards the GOP in federal elections since Obama's 08 win. Currently, the election prediction's official forecast designates only 16 states as remotely competitive in the upcoming cycle. And even among just those 16, 10 definitively lean toward one party. Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin are the only states rated as tilting in either direction, and could effectively be considered toss-ups at this time. Back in 2016, Trump's key to victory was flipping Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin from what election analysts labeled at the time the Blue Wall, the 18 states that voted Democratic in every election from 1992 to 2012. That being said, since Trump's breakthrough, Democrats have regained ground in these Rust Belt states, with Biden winning all three in 2020 and the party securing gubernatorial victories in both 2018 and 2022. Notably, Democrats' success in these states was driven by strong support in white-collar suburbs, despite resoundingly negative feelings on the economy and Biden's job performance. As such, these results highlight the challenge for the GOP in retaking Michigan and Pennsylvania while abortion rights remain a prominent issue for voters, which is a key reason why the data still indicates a tilt toward Democrats in these states. Wisconsin, though, on the other hand, is a more favorable state for Republicans. Democrats won the governor's race last year by a much smaller margin than in Michigan or Pennsylvania, and Republican Senator Ron Johnson won re-election. 
But even then, the landslide win this spring for a liberal state Supreme Court justice in a race that revolved around abortion rights suggests once again that even in Wisconsin, despite its demographics, which are predominantly white and less college-educated than any of the states in this same category, still is not leading Republican by more than about half a percentage point. Moving on further south, Democrats hope that Republican attempts to impose an unpopular abortion ban in North Carolina might help them regain ground in this state. But their lack of robust voter mobilization infrastructure, as seen in Georgia and Arizona, makes their path to victory in North Carolina a challenging one in 2024. It is still very early, of course, but these initial state rankings do have significant implications. If they hold, Democrats would start with a significant advantage in the race to reach 270 electoral college votes, which are needed to win the presidency. If you were to only count all of these safe and likely states for either party and leave the rest as toss-ups, Democrats would have a 221 to 148 electoral college vote advantage. That means that if the GOP cannot reverse the recent movement of Michigan and Pennsylvania back towards the Democrats, or regain their strength in the Sunbelt states of Arizona and Georgia, then the odds will be heavily stacked against them. I should note that the one state I have yet to mention, Nevada, appears, at least as of right now, of the 20 states that consistently voted Democratic since 2008, the most likely to shift towards the GOP in 2024. But even if Republicans come away with Nevada's six electoral votes next year, holding Michigan and Pennsylvania and their 15 and 19 electoral votes, respectively, would allow Joe Biden and Democrats to reach at least 270 electoral college votes, as long as he captures any one of Arizona, Georgia, or Wisconsin. Put another way, the eventual GOP nominee will likely be operating with a smaller margin for error in 2024 than Biden will, even with the incumbent president being historically unpopular. That's just the lay of the land right now. Another noteworthy aspect of this early forecast is the absence of Ohio and Florida from the list of truly competitive states. Both have historically been fiercely contested battlegrounds in presidential elections, making their absence noticeable, especially for all of my older viewers or non-election data nerds out there. Florida famously decided George W. Bush's win in 2000, and Ohio cemented his victory in 2004. As recently as 2016, Hillary Clinton spent more money advertising in those two states than any other. And while Biden effectively conceded Ohio in 2020, Florida still saw more television advertising than any other state. The Biden re-election campaign has spent some money on advertising in Florida in the early going, but given its rightward trend in recent years, aides to the president have not yet fully committed to making a serious effort to win in Florida. And with all of that being said, it is also worth noting that in a potential Biden versus Trump rematch, voter opinions may be less swayed by advertising than in a typical race due to the well-established views of these two candidates. Advertising could still, of course, influence at the margins, and in a presidential election that seems likely to hinge on a small number of voters in a few key states, every voter could be crucial. But come November 2024, if the choice is between Trump and Biden once again, chances are the handful of states decided by less than two percentage points will play Kingmaker once again. That is all for today's video though, let me know what other forecast related videos you would like to see in the future. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video down below if you did, and subscribe while you're at it. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.